Yuri, this is day 70 of the war in Ukraine. Where do things stand? Well, this is actually day 71. Uh, and uh, we are still, uh, we're still standing. Uh, and this is, you know, almost miraculous because uh, like we've said it so many times before, uh, nobody expected that, you know, we, we would last for so long. And uh, of course, the fighting continues in the east of Ukraine. Uh, it's very heavy. Uh, Russian armed forces are regrouping, they're building up their strength, they're sending reinforcement, they're throwing everything they have. Uh, but at the same time, Ukrainian armed forces are defending uh, pretty well. And this is why, you know, if you look at the map of the military activities for the last two weeks, the uh, front line has not actually moved that much. Moreover, in some places, in some areas, uh, Ukrainian armed forces were able to even counterattack, and our um, chief of military staff today, uh, General Zaluzhny, uh, he spoke with his uh, counterparty in the U.S., uh, General Milley, and he said to him that, look, uh, we've pushed Russians back from Kharkiv, and we are now beginning counteroffensive. And President Zelensky, when he spoke yesterday, uh, at one of the meetings, he said as well that Ukraine is entering the sort of the next stage of this war, whereby we will be now, hopefully, if we get sufficient weaponry, we will be trying to counterattack as much as possible because our objective, our aim remains unchanged. We need to liberate our cities. We, we need to uh, drive the enemy out and we need to restore peace. So you say you're prepared to move into the next stage. What do you call this next stage? What, what, what is the actual next stage of this war? Well, this next stage will, for us, uh, we will be focusing on liberating Ukrainian territories from the Russian occupiers as much as we can. And of course, it is very much dependent on the pace of the military assistance that we receive from the West. Uh, because for us to be successful and efficient in counterattacking the enemy, uh, we require those heavy weapons. We require, to require those um, armored vehicles. And of course, we require combat aircraft and we require missiles because I'm sure you were following this. Uh, there's not been a day uh, last week when there would be no missile strike. And these missile strikes, they reach now pretty much anywhere in Ukraine. There's hardly any region in Ukraine uh, that is safe. And people continue to die. And considering that these missiles... Yuri, your audio, your feed is breaking up. I don't think we have a good connection here at the moment. So um, let's um, let's reset. Are you still there? Well, yeah. Look. Um, okay. So give me one. Give I might me, be back. Give me one second here. Um, what you just said was there wasn't a day without missile strikes. Can you repeat that for us? Yes, uh, during the last week, there wasn't a day without missile strikes. Cities like Mykolaiv, cities like Kyiv again, uh, Lviv, Odessa, you know, these missile strikes occur across Ukraine. And of course, every time uh, these missile strikes happen, uh, Russians are not fighting against the military of Ukraine. They're fighting against Ukrainian schools. They're fighting against Ukrainian hospitals. Uh, and of course, this is just a sign of their weakness. And this is, you know, these are all continuous war crimes, which will be uh, first prosecuted and for which they will be held accountable. So the question I'd like to ask you uh, next is about Mariupol and the Azovstal plant. We have heard that the Russian troops have infiltrated this plant um, and that there are very... Uh, difficult battles going on. 
but it's not clear where this is taking place. Is it above ground? Is it below ground? Where, where, where is this? Uh, where are these battles taking place? Well, look, considering that we don't have uh, access to that area, uh, we just have to rely on the communications that take place between uh, military command and uh, Azov uh, battalion uh, and other Ukrainian warriors who are still there. And uh, yes, there have been infiltration of the plant yesterday, and this was reported uh, by the commander of uh, Azov battalion uh, but today we had uh, news that uh, Ukrainian soldiers have been able to repel that attack and they've uh, thrown the enemy out again. So uh, the defense of Azov-style plant continues. Uh, you know, it's been going on for over 10 weeks. Uh, it's, it's simply supernatural. And I think the whole world understands this and realizes this. And of course, uh, most efforts of the Ukrainian high military and political command are now focused on trying to still trying to establish evacuation corridors. There are still people, uh, civilian people trapped in Azov style, and there are many wounded and they need to be evacuated. And this is why President Zelensky, um, he spoke to the UN Secretary General again yesterday on the phone and he requested his assistance in trying to negotiate the ceasefire. And uh, there was a promise from the Russian side that they will, uh, you know, that they will allow these evacuation corridors to function uh, during the next couple of days. Uh, we still have to see, we have not had yet reports about the uh, evacuations today. Uh, and of course we have, you know, Russians have a bad track record when it comes to keeping their word uh, in terms of, uh, uh, maintaining ceasefire for evacuation corridors. But um, our political and military leadership are doing everything possible and impossible to establish those evacuation corridors and to get those people out. Yeah. Yuri, what is it that Ukraine, the Ministry of Defense, considers its objective when it comes to regaining its territory? Does that mean all of the territory that Russia has taken since 2014? Well, uh, the, the, if you like the minimum, the minimum requirement of course is to ensure that Russian troops are either destroyed or withdraw to the level where they were before February 24th. And of course, this is the primary objective. We need to get them out and we need to regain control over our territories um, in those geographical uh, boundaries which we had prior to February 24. Now, of course, uh, once this is achieved, uh, at the moment, nobody can kind of make a prognosis what will happen next, but uh, of course, by constitution, we are obliged <laughs> to regain the uh, full control over the Ukrainian territory. And by constitution, of course, uh, Crimean Peninsula is part of Ukrainian sovereign territory, as well as Donbass and Lugansk regions are. But we understand, and our uh, uh, political leadership understand that these are not simple questions and uh, there probably will be room for political regulation and diplomatic negotiations uh, once the primary military objectives are achieved. Uh, but it's still uh, too early to, uh, and I wouldn't want to speculate. So, okay. um, yeah. Understand. So one very brief thing, just for a brief answer, Yuri. Um, Anything you want to add just briefly about the situation that we should know about? Well, overall, uh, one thing I would like to add is that uh, the world, uh, European countries, uh, Northern African countries and Middle Eastern countries are going to face a food crisis, a serious major food crisis, because there are over 5 million tons of uh, agricultural products wheat, grain, um, sunflower seeds, uh, which are in Ukrainian warehouses, which Ukraine is not 
able to deliver to the recipients because the Black Sea is blockaded by the Russian fleet. So this is another important reason why even today, uh, one of the US congressmen, uh, unfortunately, I didn't uh, uh, catch his name uh, in the news, but uh, he said that, you know, this is something that the president of Ukraine is requesting, you know, anti-warship uh, missile systems because they are crucial for deblockading the Black Sea. And this is why this another reason why this is not just Ukraine's war. And we are, when we are asking for military assistance, we are asking for assistance which is required by not just Ukraine, but by other countries in the region, in Europe, and in other regions as well. Because you understand that food crisis is, uh, you know, after COVID, after this war, after the superinflation worldwide, uh, another food crisis will, will be a very difficult burden for the whole of the international community to bear. Uh, this is why we need to get the weapons fast. Arm Ukraine now before it's too late. Yuri, thank you very much. Thank you, JJ, as always. Thank you.